All right, hello YouTube. Gadger Boy here again. Uh, we're just gonna do a quick kit build here. Um, it's been a while since I've done a video, so I'm going to get this going. Um, it's just a simple kit I picked up the other day while I was out and about. Um, I don't know if any of you remember the game Simon Says, but uh, this is going to be one of those where you have to remember the pattern of the four buttons and push them in the right order. And I believe there's a sound component. Yes, there's a little speaker here. So there's a sound component to this as well. Um, I'm trying a new lighting setup here. So uh, hopefully um, everything's a little bit more visible. Uh, we'll see how that comes out in the render. So um, the construction of this particular circuit isn't uh, overly complicated. We've actually got the, the actual circuit here. Um, Unfortunately, I can't tell you too much about it because it uses a PIC-12, which is uh, basically just a little tiny computer, so um, it just, it has programming that it reacts to uh, in concert with the switches and LEDs um, in order for you to play the game. Um, it's a fairly simple circuit here. We've got the LEDs uh, off of the out input-output pins of the IC here. Um, each of those has a current limiting resistor here, and we've also got the switches uh, for the PIC-12 here. Um, the, let's see, we've got uh, voltage coming in on the battery on the pin 1 here, coming through a diode, probably to keep any uh, reverse current uh, coming out of the LEDs are the switches, which it shouldn't, but uh, it's a nice little safety feature there. Um, off of pin 2, it looks like we've got a little transistor here acting as an amplifier for a speaker um, with a, another uh, diode to prevent reverse flow current across the speaker and a little uh, current limiting resistor on the speaker. Um, and a very large current limiting resistor on the, uh, the transistor there. And then it looks like we've got a filter cap coming here uh, off of the power rail to prevent any uh, transient currents and probably act as a bit of a filter to smooth out uh, the logic readings coming off of the input-output pins. So it's a fairly simple circuit that we've got going here. And now I'm just going to put the thing together. Um, I'll start off narrating and then as usual we'll go to a time lapse so that you don't have to sit here and listen to my inane chatter as I work on the circuit. So I've got my soldering iron here with the nice uh, broad chisel tip there. I didn't used to uh, use this particular chip tip until I started watching Big Clive's videos. You can check out his YouTube channel as well. He's the one that inspired me to start this. Um, and uh, he favors that particular tip. And I tried it once, and it's amazing for soldering. So I'm not going to worry too much about following the directions too exactly here, except for the resistor values, making sure that they go in the right spots. So um, I'll actually go ahead and get started with the resistors. So we've got a couple of different resistors here. Um, it looks like we've got a, a 47 ohm resistor in this package that's going to be uh, orange, no, yellow, violet, gold. Uh, as you may recall from a previous video, uh, let me grab a piece of scrap paper here so I can just go over this again real quick. Um, we've got our resistor color codes. Um, my mnemonic is somewhat ribald, but uh, it's the one I got taught when I was very young and it's uh, stayed stuck in my head for that entire time. So we've got uh, bad boys rape our young girls, but Violet gives willingly. And those are the various different colors. So you've got uh, black, brown, red, 
orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, gray, and white. And each of these corresponds to a number, starting with zero and going all the way up to nine. I'm uh, just scribbling this out real quick. So when we're looking at a 47 ohm resistor, uh, we need the uh, first digit, which is 4, so that's going to be yellow, and then the second digit, which is 7, so that'll be violet. Now being as it's a 47 ohm resistor, we actually need to reduce the multiplier, um, which doesn't actually show on this standard color code, so you actually need to um, remember uh, gold and silver as well. Gold is a 0.1 multiplier and silver is a 0.01 multiplier. I have never in my life seen a resistor that has a 0.01 multiplier. So in order to get a 47 ohm resistor we need uh, yellow, violet, and then a 0.1 multiplier to make it 47 um, ohms, otherwise it, it would be 470 because we'd be multi putting a, a zero. Um, so, and actually I'm lying, that is completely wrong. Uh, for a 47 ohm resistor we need yellow, violet, black, because that's zero zeros being added at the end of it. So. Uh, yellow, violet, black. I was wrong on that first one. Uh, so we're going to look through my pile of resistors here, and there we have it, a yellow, violet, black resistor. I had to hold it up to the camera, but it's probably not good enough to see the colors. Uh, you'll just have to trust me that it's correct. So I'm just going to uh, bend the leads here. You can see that 47 ohm resistor belongs to... Uh, Alrighty, instructions tell me... Okay, that's R7, so we're going to go and find R7 here on the board. Um, and you just run the leads through the board like so. And then we'll flip it over. And... Wow, these are pure copper pads. That'll be interesting getting the solder to flow on those. But we'll do our best. And you take your soldering iron, you heat up the pad, you heat up the wire, you start some solder flowing, and there we go. Now I always like to flow the first pad and then uh, singe my finger a little bit here and make sure that the component is nice and level on the one side. And then we repeat the same process with the other lead, just like that. It's a bit of a cold solder joint there, so we'll just uh, heat it up a little bit more. Try to. There we go. I accidentally bridged that pad there. This is not the best PC board I've ever worked with, so uh, this is going to be an interesting adventure in soldering. And then you just crop off the extra wires there. Alrighty, so our next component here we're going to put on is another one of those resistors with a weird notation. Um, on this particular schematic, they're notating it as a 4K7 resistor, which means, uh, when I first saw that, I thought uh, 4K7 translated to uh, 4007 ohm resistor. But that's actually not the case. Um, I was quite baffled the first time I saw it, because I'd never seen a, a 4007 ohm resistor, and and you'd not probably be able to find a resistor accurate enough for that 7 ohms to matter across a 4k uh, 4 ohm resistor. So what this actually means is that is a 4.7k ohm resistor. Why they notate it like that, I don't know, but I've, I've seen it more in the last couple years than, than ever before. Which means, which actually translates to, I'd never seen it before and then I started seeing it just recently. So in this case, uh, once again, we've got four and seven, so we need yellow and violet. And then to make it uh, 4,007, or 4,700, 4, uh, we need to add two zeros. So we need yellow, violet, red. Um, so we've got uh, two yellow, violet, red resistors right here. 
and we'll do the same process. Spending the leads here. And those are for R5 and R6. So let's see where R5 and R6 here. Uh, got R5 there. And we'll just oh, put this down. Should have bent the leads on this one first. And then we need R6, which is right here. Really hope my hands are staying in camera here. I've got everything repositioned in a different way lately, so uh, hopefully I'm not wandering off. And then we'll do the same thing. Um, these pads are not going to be entertaining to solder, so I won't subject you to too much of the soldering process here just because it'll be really boring watching me struggle with bare copper pads. Uh, so we'll just... Actually those are pretty nice and level anyway. We'll just do a couple more here and then I'll time lapse the rest of it. I just want to show the basics of most of these components. Um, Let's see. Oh, actually, I'm going to skip over the diodes. We're, we're going to skip to a different part of the schematic here, uh, just so we can talk really quickly about uh, basic diode theory and uh, the two different diodes we have for the circuits. So they sent me two diodes here. One is this... Um, these are a dime a dozen. This is 1N4007 power diode. These are uh, these are the most common diode. They're used in everything, um, mainly because this one little diode can uh, handle a thousand volts in reverse bias before it breaks down. Now we'll talk a little bit here about uh, a diode and what that mysterious phrase I just said, reverse bias, means. Um, the point to a diode is that it only allows electricity to flow in one direction. Now the symbol for that diode looks like this. You got an arrow, point, or a little triangle pointing at a line, and the polarity is positive on this side and negative on that side. Now, without getting too deeply into the science, I'll probably do another video on the science of diodes, um, but this diode will not prevent current, will not allow current flow, um, well, we'll talk conventional current flow for now, uh, we'll get into electron current flow later, but this diode will not allow current flow in that direction. It will act as a short circuit, um, to a certain point. Um, diodes have a rating called the peak inverse repetitive voltage, uh, which is how much voltage you can apply in a reverse bias, which means in the incorrect direction, before the diode gives up on life and either starts conducting or just lets out a curl of smoke, smells bad, and then stops working entirely forever. Um, so they're used to prevent small currents from going in the wrong direction. Um, and these uh, 1N4007s are super cheap and they can handle a great deal of, of voltage in the reverse bias. Um, now, forward bias is when you've got it connected uh, with the correct polarity and you're trying to make current flow in that direction. Now, the diode is perfectly happy to do that after it eats 0.7 volts, at least a silicon diode like this one. Um, so you give it 0.7 volts, the door is open, and voltage begins to flow. Uh, and that way you can control voltage going in the correct direction. Um, now this little guy here, this is a germanium diode. This little tiny glass, uh, I'm not too sure if you can see it on camera, but it's also slightly amber. Um, that's a germanium diode. Now this has all of the same characteristics as a silicone diode or silicon diode, sorry. Uh, silicone and silicon are two entirely different subjects. Uh, this does the same thing as a silicon diode, and only 
it has a voltage drop of 0.3 volts, so it takes less voltage to actually open the doors and allow current through it. However, uh, they also have a much lower peak inverse repetitive voltage, so if you connect them in the wrong direction, they're easier to destroy. And they are less tolerant of heat, whereas a silicon diode, you can they can get fairly hot before they stop working. A germanium diode will stop working a lot sooner. Um, germanium diodes are best used in situations where <clears throat> um, there isn't a great deal of current or voltage flow. Uh, quite often you'll see them used in radios and um, audio devices in the preamp side uh, for, for some of the more sensitive voltage handling. So we'll just uh, quickly throw these ones on the board. Now, Let's see, our germanium diode here. I probably should have looked up the specs on that one just uh, for reference sake, but uh, we'll skip that for now. Uh, we can get into diodes a little bit more detail later. So I'm just going to bend the leads here. And this diode needs to go in D1, which is right over here. And I did not crop those, or I did not bend those leads nearly tight enough. It's a very small component, so it's uh, sometimes you have to kind of guess uh, how the, the leads are going to line up. Let's uh, fold that up a little bit more. There we go. So the important thing, as we were discussing earlier with forward and reverse bias, is to make sure that the diode polarity is correct. Now, you can tell the polarity of a diode by a stripe or a bevel on the diode, and in this case they have a stripe, so you're going to look for that black bar on the end of the diode uh, with the germanium one, or the white bar here on the end of the silicone diode. Silicon diode. I'm going to be constantly correcting myself on that. And uh, thankfully they've got the polarity marked here on the board with the stripe, so we're just going to tuck that right in there. Um, now germanium diodes are a little bit sensitive to heat, so I'm going to solder this one a little a little bit proud on the board so that the heat from the soldering iron doesn't get too close, doesn't affect it too badly. Um, I don't want to kill this little project before it even gets started. Now there we go. That's good. And we'll just... Uh, solder the other side here and then I'll show you here I just uh, let it sit a little a little higher on the board than uh, than the other components just to keep it away from the heat of the soldering iron and then we'll just crop off the leads just like that and we'll quick quickly throw on the uh, power diode here it's going to go in diode 2 that's right there Again, observing the polarity, we've got the stripe on the board there, so we're going to put the stripe with the diode, just like that. I don't need to mount this one prior, uh, any proud at all. In fact, the leads on these um, 1N4007s, ooh, that's a little toasty. Uh, the leads on these 1N4007s are fairly thick, so they can actually sometimes, on certain boards, be a little challenging to uh, solder because oh my soldering iron is way too warm let's turn that down a little bit um, leads are so thick they absorb a, a bunch of uh, thermal energy and it's harder to melt the solder alrighty so that's about all of the interesting components here um, we'll quickly throw one of the LEDs on and we'll talk briefly about this little transistor here. So this transistor is being used for uh, the audio portion of the circuit, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Um, so it's being used as an amplifier. Uh, you can use a transistor in, in a number of different ways, and, and I will talk about these in more detail in, in another video because they're uh, 
rather quite complicated and uh, involved to explain, but they basically act as a gateway for electricity. Um, kind of like a diode, only you can control when the door opens uh, using this third pin. So I'll just give you a quick quick and dirty explanation of a transistor. We've got the symbol looks kind of like this. This is a little bit messy. And then we've got an arrow. And the three pins of this device are the emitter, the collector, and the base. So we've got the emitter here, the collector here, and the base here. Now what happens is um, where you want the current flow to be controlled, you apply um, that part of the circuit on the collector and the emitter. Then you send basically a trigger signal to the base. Now, in general, the door between the collector and the emitter is closed until the base receives a voltage. When the base receives a voltage, that door opens up and current begins to flow from the collector and the emitter. Um, so it's kind of an electronic switch, and that's actually how a lot of transistors um, are used uh, in your cell phones and your computers. The, the CPUs on those devices use trillions of uh, transistors all acting as switches to control the data flow uh, through them. But we'll go into greater detail about transistors in a later video. For now, I'm just going to bend these leads so that I can get them onto this uh, PC board here. Um, transistors are another one of those devices that's a little bit sensitive to heat, so this one as well I'm going to mount a little proud on the board uh, so that I don't accidentally kill it with my soldering iron, because I have done that in the past. Um, now thankfully they've got the shape of the transistor here, you see it's sort of a half moon, so we're gonna mount it on the board in the same direction. Uh, sometimes the uh, PC boards will just have a notation for the emitter and the collector and the base. So uh, in those situations you'll want to check the data sheets to make sure that you get the, the pins mounted in the correct locations. So we're just going to solder this really fast. We don't want to heat these leads up any more than we have to uh, because even more so than that germanium diode, uh, this transistor will die if it gets too warm. Yeah, that's nice and cool, so I didn't get too much heat in it. So we'll just uh, crop those leads off. And then we'll just uh, do one of the LEDs really quickly. Um, LEDs are another type of diode. It stands for light emitting diode. And it works the same as one of the pre diodes we spoke of previously, except that in far forward bias condition, it drops a certain amount of voltage. In the case of a red one, it's about 1.8 volts, and it begins to glow. And in the reverse bias condition, it does absolutely nothing until 6 volts, and then it lets out a curl of smoke and then dies. Um, so you want to make sure you do observe the polarity of a diode or a light emitting diode very carefully because they're very sensitive to uh, inverse voltages. Now in the case of these little tiny 3 millimeter LEDs, um, it can sometimes be a little challenging to identify which is the anode and which is the cathode. On a regular LED, which they are all at school because I was working on a project uh, for my instructor, so I won't be able to show you one of those. But on one of the regular 5 millimeter LEDs, they've got a little flat side on the LED, which indicates the negative side of the LED, which is the cathode. Um, but on these little tiny LEDs, they don't have a flat spot. So in that case, you have to trust that whatever company was cropping the leads on these uh, crop them correctly, 
and left the short uh, short lead as the cathode. So we're going to trust them on this one. And um, let's see, the cathode needs to go on the flat side here. So we're just going to run that. Uh, I want to mount these a little bit proud too, just because they're... Uh, part of the visual effects of the game here, so I want to give them a chance to be fairly visible. Uh, and LEDs also are sensitive to heat, not quite as much as uh, the transistor or the germanium diode, but you don't want to get them too warm. So we'll just uh, mount that a little bit proud and finish up the soldering there. And then again, we'll crop the leads. And that's just uh, some of the basics there. Alright, and we're back because I hadn't realized from the instructions initially, but there's actually kind of a weird thing I have to do uh, to finish um, building this thing. You probably saw me being briefly confused about how this is mounted. I'm not thrilled with the fact that it's only two posts holding that uh, battery pack on board there. Um, but in order to get the battery pack to actually send voltage to the circuit, uh, according to the instructions at least, which I spent some few minutes looking at uh, between takes here. Um, I probably should have bent these up uh, during the time off camera. Uh, come on, end up you. That's good enough. Um, I have to take these two little jumper leads here and solder them onto the board and then bend them up and uh, solder them onto the leads of the battery pack. So this is going to be a little interesting to do. Uh, I'm going to start with the negative terminal. Uh, just because it'll be easier to lay the wire there. Um, I'm going to use a ton of solder. This is going to be interesting. Uh, secure this thing on. I'll just get that really wet there with solder. There we go. There's a nice big load of solder flowing onto that, and then we have to, yeah, it actually shows, uh, bending the wire over like so, and feeding it back through. This is going to be challenging. I'm going to crop it a little bit shorter here, just to simplify the process. Um, and I'm going to probably stab myself with it, and it might be blood, and you know, I'll just use the needle nose pliers here instead so that I don't uh, draw blood. And I'm going to monkey this around a little bit, and play with it some more, and now that's good enough. You know doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to conduct, which it should be doing now. So let's uh, flow some solder on there. Let's flow some solder on there. Come on. There we go. The solder did not want to take, but 
looks like we're good. And we'll repeat that process with the positive lead. Um, let's see, how do I want to do that? I think I'm going to do it in this direction. And then we'll put a little bit of a pre-wetting of the tip there. Bunch on. Ah, bugger. Come on, you. Ah, there we go. It's a little challenging to pick a wire up off the table. Alright, so there's that. Repeat the process, bending this up, turning it down a little bit, bring it over, and feeding it through. Like so. It's not pretty, but it works. There's probably an easier way to do that, but let's just finish. Come on, solder. Okay. Come on. All right. So there's that. And the last step is to actually socket this IC. IC stands for Integrated Circuit. If anybody was wondering at the terminology there. As usual, the leads are much wider than the, or the pins are much wider than the holes on the socket. So I'm just gonna kind of you can get away with this with the smaller sockets. It's harder to do evenly on the larger sockets, but you just give it a pinch on the leads there, and then they slot right in. Now you know the right, you know the correct direction to slot those by the socket has a little divot which is mirrored on the board and the chip also has a divot. Now, I just realized as I'm sitting here and getting ready to test the thing that I don't think I have enough AA batteries for it. So um, I'm gonna go salvage some AA batteries from somewhere in the house and I will be right back. All right. I'm back. That actually took me a lot less time than I thought it would. I just stole the batteries out of my salt grinder, which you'll actually find a tutorial of me hacking my salt grinder uh, on my channel. Um, I replaced the little incandescent LEDs they had in, or the little incandescent lamps that they had in the uh, grinder with a LED instead. All right. Right, I'm not too sure if that's going to show up on camera, but I've got some uh, blinking LEDs here. That's a good sign. Uh, let's see, we've got level 1, level 2, level 3, and level 4. And we've got no notes and notes. Um, so, let's see what the sounds like on this thing. Oh, this is just lovely. So, that's the uh, Simon Says game. The buzzer isn't quite nearly as obnoxious as I thought it was going to be, but it still isn't the most beautiful thing in the world. So there you go. That's the Simon Says kit built. It looks like it uh, actually has a low power standby mode in here that goes into. So the uh, programming on that uh, PIC-12 is actually pretty decent. Uh, so it won't run your batteries down sitting there blinking the LEDs. So and there you have it. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed watching, uh, give me a like, give me a subscribe, share with your friends. 
do whatever it is you do when you like a video on YouTube. And uh, I will see you in the next video. Um, don't forget, I've set myself up a Patreon. Help me with some of my living expenses. If you've got a couple extra bucks, I'll be able to do more uh, kit builds, more teardowns, stuff like that. Uh, the link will be in the description below. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.